Yeah, you are yeah, welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, for benefit of those who are watching, what's your name? <laughs> okay, um, on over meridians. Okay. And um, what was your school, university? University University. Alright. Yes. I'd like to know your hobbies. Okay. Funny enough, my needs um, have like a static hobby because when I try new stuff and I start enjoying it, but generally, um, I have the same for creative thinking, so I like to, I make clothes, so most times I'm just, you know, thinking, design, and other things, and then um, I also love researching, I enjoy that a lot, yeah, and then I like to sleep. <laughs> because I like to rest. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I don't know. You made this good, no? Oh no, no. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> no, I didn't make this good. All right. Um, I heard that you made a first class. In, I know it's great. <laughs> okay, first class in what? Law. In law. Yeah. Wow. Wow, a lot of people uh, don't think of this class and anyway. All right, that's that's wonderful. Um, so let's look at that. How you got that first class? Did you initially have a plan from year one that you would make a first class, or something just happened? I started making. <laughs> okay, it didn't just happen. Okay. I was um, very intentional about it. Um, I think while I was registering for my jam, God helped me. I met um, a lecturer. He's also a family friend, but mm -hmm. he was a lecturer in faculty of and he told me something. He said, coming here, it's better for you to aim for a first class. So that even if anything happens along the line, mm -hmm. you can now drop to a 2 one. So with that mentality, I felt it was possible. So I just in fact, after everything, someone told me, really, as you know, that if you probably set your mind to be the best graduate student, you could have actually done that. I'm like, really? It's true because, yeah, so I, I was very intentional about it. I had that goal set in my heart that this is what I want from this institution. And, yeah. All right, that's beautiful. Um, if we look at it that way, uh, I could also ask, are you very brilliant in secondary school? Let's know that that's where I started from. Um, God has been helping us. Um, well, growing up, I didn't have that belief that I was really smart. But my grades were fine. My grades were okay, they were great. But when I got to secondary school, um, they were also awesome, I think, first positions and all that. But I didn't think it was something innate because I was really a hard worker. I was a very, sometimes my parents would really beg me, calm down, take it easy. So I. I didn't feel it was something that was inside. I just had, okay, maybe I'm a smart child, but more of my results were, you know, a payoff of hard work. Okay. Yes. All right, a lot of year one people, they miss it in the first year. Because when they came from secondary school, someone like me, when I entered the university, I felt that in secondary school, when they tell you have eight C's, <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. So, yeah. come to the university, I felt that even if I don't get A, I get C, <laughs> it, will be, it will be normal for me. Yeah. So, a lot of people miss it at that year one. Uh, but for you, you said from an advice, you started hitting it hard yeah. from year one. And that's, that's a wonderful one. All right, so was there any period during your university days when you felt discouraged or somehow frustrated like mm -hmm. let me just abandon this aim or plan uh, a lot of times in fact the very first one was in my year one because yes i came with that um zeal to do really great but in one first semester i put in so much energy and so many of my classmates had all a's five points and i had a b god it was very frustrating as a second semester, there were lots of five points, and I was only 4.8. I said, God, how do I want to? So for me, that was even the very first discouragement I had. But I just kept pushing, and um, I figured that, well, I needed to make some of those mistakes to learn ahead of time. Okay. So I, at that point, I could now start deciphering, okay, this was what I probably did wrong, I know. And then along the line, in fact, in faculty of law, they will always tell you the higher you go, the tougher it becomes. Yeah. So it got really tough. 
Um, then one of the major ones was year three. Year three was a hit because I was sick and my boy had to go through a surgery and I didn't start up on time. Um, they had lot. We had lots of difficult courses and lecturers. Those ones that they will tell you if you see a C in this course, say thank God. So it was really discouraging at that point, but. I think my eyes were just fixed on the goal. Okay. So regardless of all the most of those courses, I, I I would usually tell myself and also tell God that because people have said this thing is impossible, I want to make a difference and I become you know very intentional about it, both preparing for the exam, studying, praying. I put in my all and God was really faithful because He yielded results. So mm -hmm. there were really so many times where I felt like giving up, but God just helped us to stay focused. Yeah, you mentioned some about difficult lecturers. So how did you jump over oh. those <laughs> wicked, seemingly wicked lecturers? For me, the first thing, I learned that from secondary school, that never see a lecturer as wicked. So no matter what anybody says about this lecturer, I had this belief that if you start by categorizing your lecturer as difficult, it will be difficult for you to learn from that person. So you will just struggle. I mean, you don't like this person. So nothing the person says entices you. So the first thing I did was to take off that notion. Even when I go to class and I see that truly what these people are saying is the truth of God, I can never allow it to get inside of me that this man is a wicked man, this man is a difficult man, or any of those things. I just come to class, listen, take what I can take. When you want to show off your devilish side, I will ignore you, really. And then... Um, the, but the one time I really had an encounter with um, a seemingly difficult lecturer was in my final year. Um, in fact, it was so funny because it was at the point of submitting my project. So literally, I was done with academic activities. And that, so everybody was asking me, how is it that you did not meet them year one, year two, and it was up until final year? And I think God just really wanted to teach me something through that process and he was one of those lecturers that um, I into womanizing and so um, he asked so um, I had I had um, a C because I missed the test yeah I wasn't feeling so strong so I missed the test and so because of that I had a C and then when he saw my results he was like ah what happened your exam was so good but I said I missed the test and he said oh, okay um, what do you want? I just uh, if you give me a better grade than that, I will appreciate. And next up, it was like, okay, meet me at Susu place. And I said, oh. So I went home and I told God, if it's this final year that this particular temptation wants to come, then I am not in for it. And um, I also went to my parents and they encouraged me, like, a C. In fact, at that point, I started calculating everything. I said, okay, what's the worst thing can this C do to my results? But by the time I calculated it, I found out that even if he decided to give me a C, God will still pull through with my grades and I will still be able to graduate to the first class. So I said, I mean, what, is, what am I going to compromise at this point? So it wasn't an option. And fortunately, as the glory of God, the next time when I went to submit my project, the man just saw me. But that day I prayed. I said, God, let this man not remember me. Let him not recognize me. Let him not think of anything. that. Let it not even come to his memory that he has had an encounter with me. And then by the time I got there, he was like, ah, what's your name? I told him, are you from Gray? Yes, where? I said, after everything, he said, are you in my department? Yes, what's your CGP? I told him. And he said, are you serious? Okay, and hey, what did you have in my exams? I, I just told him. And the next thing, he just picked up his phone, called up his, uh, his secretary. And he was like, um, please check so 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 thing. Oh, she didn't take the test. Okay, just give her 10 marks. Okay, for that, she has a B. Are you okay with that? I said, sir, I'm okay. He said, okay, no problem. And that was it. Wow. And I left the office and... I just I went home. I was just crying. That was the first time I really saw God, and um, that's when I realized that even in dealing with those people, you need God. Yeah. It's not about who the person is. The Bible makes us understand that the hand of every man, every king, everybody is in God's hand. So that was also my prayer point. Like God, convict this man's heart for my sake. So for me, that was how I paved <laughs> paved through. Difficult lecturers and I never fail in victim to them. Oh, that's wonderful. So while in school, um, you had some mentors? Yes, yes I did. Okay. I had a mentor, academic mentor and of course um, spiritual mentors and here and there. So, And um, it was very helpful. In fact, the, the 
first semester, the semester I had a mentor was one of my best. I think that semester I had a five point. And um, yeah, he, he was really helpful. He made me, he caught my vision and he pushed me. In fact, some days I would cry. I'm like, it's okay. I can't always be reading. <laughs> I need to do other things. But he just, he kept pushing and that was a propelling force. Even those days when I feel like giving up and then I talk to him, he would always encourage me because you, you have believed it and you have gotten this far. Just keep on moving and so that was one of the, you know, key factors to my success. Alright, that's beautiful. Um, just to ask, in your academic years, did you have a problem with um, the opposite sex relationship? Oh, yes, I did, and um, of course I faced the consequences because mine was, um, unfortunately, was a situation of God saying, don't go into this now, but we probably let emotions have a better part of us, and um, it, was, it, didn't, it didn't go without consequences because it was not just a distraction, it was also a pulling down force, right, because... First, God said, don't go into it. But, you know, those kind of words that when you hear, you like, oh, it's not God, it's my mind that is telling me. So, that was one of the mistakes I made. And, um, in fact, that particular year, I, it was one of my worst years in, in school. Like, I had my worst grades in school because it was distracting. It did distract me. And I thank God for mercy and grace. At that point, when I knew, I just... <laughs> I had to take a U-turn, so yes, it was, I did have that experience and then it wasn't such a pleasant one. Okay. So while growing up, were there things you learned in church or something or somewhere at home that helped kept you through your academic years? A lot. In fact, for me, that was um, my foundation. Those years that were in church and then it didn't seem like anything like some days we even felt angry when they would come and they are just saying one thing but by the time i got to the university i realized that those things i learned back then helped me define myself it helped me find my identity so as at when i got into the university i already had this mindset that i'm a different person so not everything applies to me. I'm a chosen generation. I'm a peculiar person. So I already had this belief inside of me that I am different. I am unique in my own way. And then I am um, growing up to, they always, especially in chapel, <laughs> transfiguration. So there was always this belief that you can't do anything. I remember then in um, Don Seo, even when you struggle, in fact, there was a particular time we're trying to dance and then I knew I wasn't getting this thing, but Kepri was like, "Well, I already has to go to the front." So there, there was already this indoctrination that you can't do all things. There is no limitation. Once you believe it, you can do it. So then it didn't seem, but by the time you know I got to the university, the fruits started, it started bearing fruits. So I first knew who I was in Christ and the fact that not everything is for me. And I also had this belief that I have no limitation. I can actually do whatever. I put my heart to do God helping. And then I think the third very important thing that um, childhood tutelage helps me um, understand is the fact that God is, God is and will always be interested in me even when I make mistakes. I remember then in chapel there were some stories, you know, our teachers shared with us. And that day I realized that where you, where you fail or where you become defeated is when you drop down and you re you choose to remain there when you choose to allow the devil suppress you with guilt. So even times where I made mistakes and I felt I had gone astray, deep down in my heart, I already knew that God is merciful. So at that point, I just, I feel like, no devil, you can't hold me down with this guilt and I'm able to push forward. So for me, these three things, till tomorrow, they will still be, those guiding principles that I can always fall back on. Alright, that's wonderful. So for those who are starting to get to first class, those in year one, those in year two, um, that may be watching this, what advice? I'm actually thinking of doing a book on academic success. Wow. I, I train a lot on academic success. So I, I at least 
let's hear your own view. What are some things you advise people who want to make it academically? Okay. Very first thing is you are absolutely nothing without God. Okay. Now, there were times where I tried to do it myself, but it works for some people. You you can go to campus and see people that don't know God and still do well. But I noticed that there was a difference. So where I was trying to do it by myself, I had to work harder than I should have worked. But the moment God came into the picture, I wasn't struggling anymore. So I got some things because of unmerited favors, not because I worked for it, but God just had to step in. So the very first thing is you must first find your identity in God. Because when those times of difficulty come, your classmates may not be able to help you. Your lecturer, at that point, some lecturers will even tell you you have failed and you are a failure. So your lecturers may not be able to help you. Your mentors may not even be able to help you because probably your case is so bad. But there is definitely one person that is always there. He said he would make a way even when there seems to be none. So the very first thing is holding on to God. And secondly, believing in yourself. Believe that you have absolutely no limitation. In fact, by the time I understood that scripture that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, I realized that I am my own limitation. So in God's perspective, there is absolutely nothing I can't do. But the one thing that would limit me from doing all things is myself. So once I begin to have this belief that, oh, these are the things I can do, these are the things I cannot do, I would naturally not be able to do those things I believe I can do. So once you have that belief that I can do it, and it doesn't just end at that, you back it up with hard work. There are no two ways about it. The Bible says study to show yourself a workman that needs to, uh, needs to not be ashamed rightly divided the word of truth. So it's not just enough for you to believe it. It's not just enough for you to trust God for it. You must do your part by working hard. And in working hard, um, I've also come to realize that there's a difference between working hard and working smart. So you uh, don't just be carried away with working hard. While working hard, you must also learn to work smart. So you know when you you know when to be studying, you know, for knowledge sake, and you know when to be studying for grade sake. So you are able to tell yourself, okay, this thing I'm reading now is just because I want to know it. And so you can't expect that while preparing for exams, you are trying to read so much for knowledge sake, and then you um, disregard your coursework. So you see some people in the, in the library, you see them three hours, five hours, and you feel Jesus, I've not even read anything. And then by the time you realize, you find out that the, what the person is researching is what they will teach them in year five. And this person is just in year one. Wow. Yeah, so you must learn to work hard and work smart. And then I think um, another important factor is association. Surrounding yourself with people that share and have the same motive with you. Because those days when you may feel like giving up, you may need those people to encourage you. You may need the, even if they don't encourage you, looking at their life, you may become motivated again. But if you, if I, one of the mistakes I made was at that initial time, I felt everybody was my friend. Forgetting the fact that some people actually came to this school and for them, pass is okay, two two is okay. So it was later on I realized that ah, not everybody has this first class goal I have. So at that time, I started becoming intentional about my friendships. I lost lots of friends along the line. Um, but towards the end, God helped me. And then I knew people that I needed to, you know, associate more with. So by the time you have a goal, you know that not everybody can help you actualize that goal. So you be very intentional about your associations, intentional about your friends. You could have friends that the only thing they come out for is, ah, Radiance, when are we going to the movie? Radiance, when are we going to this? Radiance, when are we going for? And then they never come to ask you anything. Ah, have you researched this case? Have you done this? Have you read this topic? They don't have any value. They associate yourself from such persons because no matter how much you think you want to go up the ladder, they are a very strong pulling down force. Yeah. Because, and then it's even worse of when you feel, oh, you want to be generous to help them. In an attempt to help pull them up, you may also fall down with them. So I think um, that was pretty much. And okay, I think one other thing is service to God, really. Service to God, because um, 
initially when I got into school, I was running away from any. I was in fellowship, but I was running away from anything, service, executive position, and all of those things. But um, I realized that being given a responsibility by God draws you closer to God. And when you are closer to God, the Bible says, take care first his kingdom and his righteousness and every other thing. So the moment you go after God's work, despite your surrounding, you know, academic work and everything, but you still dedicate time for God's work, you put God under an obligation that because you have chosen to still seek his kingdom, regardless of all your numerous activities, your success and your excellence, because he has said it will be added to you, you put him under, under, under an obligation to make those things available for you. So, I didn't just desert church or felt I was an executive in you know two different fellowships actually, and God helped me. Though the workload seemed a lot, but I trusted God for balance. For me, I wasn't doing it because I can multitask. All my motive was. Matthew 6, 33. I should seek first his kingdom. So for me, doing your kingdom work should be able to sort out my academic work. So even when I get to those points of frustration, I go to him in prayer, reminding him of his word. The Bible says a laborer is worthy of his wages. So I, rem I remind God of these promises. Because you have promised me these things, please make them available. So don't just be carried away with academic work that you forget the place of God's work. Dedicate time to God's vineyard because those ones have natural blessings and then you don't need to struggle for those ones. Yeah. Wow, that's very wonderful. I've learned a lot. Yes. Okay. So if you are a student, um, it's important that you know that you are nothing without God. You are nothing without God. Then you should also hard, I mean work hard, yeah. then work smart. <laughs> Yes, there are people who work hard. I, in school then, there are people, ordinarily speaking, speaking one-on-one -on -one with them, yeah. they are better than me. Yes. But when the result came out... <laughs> you can't even... You start asking yourself well, questions. Like. The result was better than theirs. Yes. So, you work hard, you work smart. There are times you will need to cram something. Just, Just to cram avoid it. Yes. Just That's cram it at that moment. Know when to do that. Yeah. Then... Um, right association, be intentional about your friendship. Not everyone is meant to be your friend. Yes. Not everyone is meant to be your friend. Then we also talked about service to God. A lot of people feel that if they work in fellowship, they will be able to do well. Or, yeah. yeah, but we have seen someone who was an ESCO executive in fellowship and also did well, got a first class. Then there are some others who are in fellowship, they are executive and are not doing well. Sometimes it's the motive. Exactly. Yes, some people feel, yes, I am able, I'm multi-taxing, I'm exactly. this and this. But from what she said, her motive is just what God says, seek me, seek me, and you will see what I'll do for you. So our motives matter a lot. So uh, uh, I think I just want to add, because I too had that, um, I felt really discouraged when I see people, when you see them serve in church, you would, in fact, you are motivated, but when their results come, you are not impressed. In fact, they have carryovers, they have, and and I realized something. God is a God of principles. Mm -hmm. So you can't spend 50 hours praying and then you expect to spend just 30 minutes studying and you want... Now, when you activate those spiritual elements, for them to begin to manifest, they must, because of course, Spirit, where life is spiritual, but we operate in the realm of the physical, right? So for them to become activated, they must meet with something that they can work with in the physical. So when you have empowered yourself spiritually and you are not reading, you don't attend classes. In fact, I've seen people who, executives, they would abandon classes for one week and say they are going for programs. It is good. With, if, it is only good if when you come back, you are able to cover up for that one week you lost. But most of them feel God will. And I'm like, okay, when you now get to the exam hall and you see questions, what is God supposed to remind you? What is it supposed to bring to your remembrance? Because you didn't study these things. So as much as you are exerting so much energy in your spiritual life, you must exert that same energy too. Um, energy too. 
the Bible says um, in Luke chapter 2 that Jesus grew in strength and in wisdom. But before that, um, I think that was verse 52, and um, the Bible says that he had the spirit of wisdom and excellence upon him. But while at the temple with the um, professors and all of those things, he stayed to learn from them. He stayed back to, this is somebody that already has the spirit of wisdom and excellence on him. But he still put himself in that position of learning. And then by the time he spoke, they were marveled and all that. So even if they have laid hands on you and say you have the spirit of excellence, you must still create that time to work hard, to desire excellence. So as much as you put in so much energy in your spiritual life, please don't neglect your academic life or anything. Give that same energy, give that same zeal you use for God's work to your academic, so that when God wants to start working, he's, he can also meet your level of preparedness and it will be easier for him to give you what you desire. Yeah, a lot of people go for programs where they say they'll give you bread and go in viral, go do this, lay hands on you for example. Holy hanky, like that. And all uh, things like that. You need to work hard. Exactly. It's a principle. So and you reap. Exactly. Uh, if you don't plant academically, what do you want to harvest? I'm so um, ready and I'm so grateful. Most <laughs> grateful <laughs> for making it possible for this interview. I believe a lot of people will learn from it. I I have a desire to help the young ones grow academically to be the best that they can be, and that's what God God says that He has made us the head and not the tail, so that you shall be above only. Yes. Uh, you're a lawyer, so when they say shall, it's, yes, it's something, it that, yes, it's something that must happen. Yes, so he said God will make you the head. Uh, he didn't say God will make you above. God will make you the head and yes. you have the responsibility. You shall be above. Stay up yes, so you, you have a responsibility, something to do. That's why even in faith, the Bible says, um, work out your salvation. You have yes. something to do. Mm -hmm. Yes, to stay to above. To stay up there. Uh, only. So, um... I'm so much grateful. <laughs> Most grateful, sir. I am really. Yeah, God bless you. It's a wonderful privilege. Thank yes. you so much, sir. Sorry for the heat. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. No.